What's up YouTube? Today we are installing a GTP38R that I pulled off of a truck. It's got a uh, EBPV delete that I installed. I pulled it off of another turbo that we had, basically an EBPV delete, uh, real quick. Uh, so this is an OEM one, it's got this little butterfly, it's supposed to help with cold starts, but sometimes the butterfly gets seized shut. And uh, you know, it'll hinder your exhaust flow and do a couple other nasty things. You don't need it, especially in Florida. So when I put in a turbo that's been sitting for a while, I like to put a little bit of a little splash of Amsoil in there, just to help get it going, help rejuvenate it. So it, when it, when the truck starts up, it's got a little something something in there. You know, it's not just completely dry. Uh, it might not even be worth it, but you know, it makes me feel better. So I'm assuming you already got the turbo off. If you got to this point. I did. You're gonna want to pull these uh, O-rings out real easy, real quick. And you're going to want to grab brand new O-rings because if you pull the turbo and put a new one on there without new O-rings and then your truck springs a leak, I don't want to hear it. That's on you. You're lazy. These O-rings are cheap. There's no excuse to not put them in when you're doing a turbo. You got a turbo on there and as you can see, you got to drop them right away. But then, you know, you get them in there. You get your V-band clamp. The uh, V-band for the up pipes are smaller than the V-band for the uh, the exhaust there, so you can't really get them mixed up. You feel me? And you must make sure that these V-bands are seated, and you must make sure that you got the turbo in there the correct way. It goes back first. Uh, you should see it pop up on the screen here. There it is. Back first. You kind of got to roll it with with the front of the turbine in there. There she goes. And now you got it up under your cab. This is pretty much the only way to do it, unless you want to pull your cab, which in this case, I didn't. And just kind of, you know, snake it in there. As you can see, the Amsoil is not leaking out, like some people will claim it will, as soon as you put it in there. The only Amsoil you see on the top of the uh, turbine housing there is uh, that spill, due to my lack of skill when it comes to pouring uh, a half gallon of Amsoil. So, what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to... Uh, you know, mess around with the exhaust clamp before you realize that the V-band on the back of the turbo is supposed to go on first. So, learn from my mistake there. But, you're also going to want to make sure that this V-band clamp on the turbo only goes on one way, and it's that way. If you put it on backwards, and you tighten it from the other side, you will not be able to get it off. I repeat, you will not be able to get it off. I've seen dudes cut them. I've seen dudes chisel them off. I've seen dudes go through their firewall with a torch. It's just a really ugly, ugly time. I use a little pry bar to uh, pry the exhaust up on the turbo. Uh, future reference, never heat wrap anything under your engine bay. Ever. Please don't do it. Yeah, I held it there. Uh, make sure all three sides of the V-band clamp are clamped between the uh, exhaust manifold and the downpipe. And then there's this little uh, thing that you clamp once you pull the V-band off. You see what I mean. But there's a little T, and you're just supposed to slide that in there. And you're going to want to tighten that down. It's a 11 millimeter socket. Nothing too crazy. Don't make it too tight because you can pull the little T out. You're going to want to drop the 15 millimeter bolts down onto the turbo. Uh, do not pry between the turbo and the turbo pedestal. It's a bad idea. It's a machine surface. You may spring a leak and you'll probably have to buy and replace your turbo pedestal. So, you're going to want to hold it with a little pry bar there. Hold it in the right spot is what I did. And I took my little electric ratchet and just like that it's seated down there. If you have uh, any gap there then you did it wrong and you got to loosen it and try again. Also make sure that your o-rings are still seated. I did. Uh, you can shine a little light in there and see. We're going to clean up the spider here. Use the OEM spider. You're going to want to make sure you pull that ceramic spacer off uh, for the uh, intake air heater. You don't want to lose that. I'm cleaning this up with a Lumabrite and a brush. Don't freak out. This stuff is not nearly as hot as it was 20 years ago, unfortunately. I kind of wish it was. But you can see how oily and greasy it is there and dull. And, you know, if you keep up with it, you might have something halfway presentable. A lot of people have an issue... Uh, throwing these spiders on to the plenums. So what I do is I leave one of the uh, boots on that side, on that plenum, 
has to be that plum and you leave the silicone boot on the other side on the spider so that when you throw the spider on there you can kind of just roll it on you throw see you throw the uh, the right side of the spider on to the plenum and then you're gonna want to uh, kind of roll that side in see and you press it down and sometimes you can do it with your fingies in this situation I couldn't so you can opt for a small Harbor Freight pick that you probably got for free just by walking into the store. Harbor Freight, sponsor me. Use your stuff. Uh, just be sure not to damage the boot. I'm using silicone boots here, but you know you, you don't want to damage that boot. It's just something you don't want to do. And if you did this right, it should line up straight to the turbo. You're going to want to grab your V-band clamp here. This is an even weaker V-band clamp. Do not, uh, not over-tighten this. Because if you screw it up, you're going to have to buy one, and I think they're kind of expensive. I don't know. I've never had to buy one, but it looks like that might be expensive. It's an 8mm, same with all the other hose clamps on this truck, which, funny enough, the only hose clamps found on this truck are just in the boost system. <laughs> uh, well, you know, non, non, you know, squeezy hose clamps. I got a special tool for the regular hose clamps. Uh, then you're going to want to throw the, uh, the ground wire on there. Ground wire first, always. Then you get your ceramic spacer. Awesome insulator, by the way. And then throw the power wire on so that now your intake air heater works in Florida. Hook up your electrical connections. You can't screw those up. If you do, you forced it, and you shouldn't be under the hood of this truck anyway. I also didn't install the, um, the little boost control line things, the wastegate control, because um, they were brittle and they cracked and I didn't have them yet, but they're going on the truck. So you're going to want to snake in the, I always do the passenger side first because it's the hardest. There's a lot of wires there, don't force it, just kind of guide it. And put the bottom on first onto the intercooler, then you're going to want to slide the top down under the spider, and then you're going to want to use the pick to bring it around to the top of the spider and it'll snap right on. Once again, do not screw up that boot. Same story on the other side. Slow and steady. Don't screw it up. Uh, there's a lot of stuff there. You might have to guide it. Slide it onto the intercooler. Boom. You're going to want to press the uh, top down and then bring it back up. Grab the pick, run that around the silicone boot, and boom, right onto the spider. No biggie. Easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And uh, I'm not using OEM clamps here, so that's a 13 millimeter socket, but I believe your OEMs are 12s, I want to say. So, you know, you don't want to over tighten these. Just make sure they're, you know, they're, they're good to snug. Just snug. You don't have to kill it. A lot of people kill these clamps, I don't know why. Uh, you can screw them up that way. Make sure you do the same thing on the bottom and the same thing on the other side. So these are the two intakes. Bottom one's the OEM. Big one's is the Banks for the GTP38R. Big size difference. I'm used to that. Throw this on, make sure the uh, crankcase pressure valve is in there. This is an OEM part, by the way. This didn't come in the Banks kit. This is the same one your, you, your truck's had on it since day one. It kind of didn't fit well, you know, because, you know, I, I'm Gail Banks. You know, I have government contracts, and I'm worth $60 million and own a private company. I phew, I don't need to make anything that fits. What do you mean? So, and then you're going to want to crank down that 8 millimeter to the uh, little computer plug slash valve cover something there. And I had to hold this down with my knee and tighten it with the ratchet and you know this this really just didn't fit on here and it, it was weird you know and the air box was gonna work you know? it just you know I really don't think that this kit had a real good fit and finish at least not this particular one but it's not beyond my skill set because nothing is at least nothing from Gail Banks anyway but uh you're going to want to throw this pre-oiled, pre-cleaned, used filter on there. 
Keep in mind, I pulled this off of a parts truck. That was in a wreck. But, uh, yeah. Just tighten that down and you're good to go. So we got this installed. GTP38R should be on your truck by now, by the end of the video, in this 10 minute span. I didn't attach the map sensor line because I forgot to before I stopped filming. But, uh, that should be it. Tune in for the next episode.